Hi everybody, welcome back to Mando Lessons. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at um, a little bit of pick direction and general spots to play triplets, often in Irish tunes, but they show their heads in other tunes. Um, there's a lesson also um, in this or sorry, on my website, mandolessons.com, that talks about kind of getting different sounds out of your triplets, whether they sound like this, triplet, or a little more percussive. It's percussive and sort of more tone-based, sounds like this. If you want to learn more about that, check that lesson out at mandolessons.com. Um... There's a couple ways to donate over at MandoLessons.com if you want to help me keep making lessons. That said, if it's not in the cards, the lessons are totally free, as well as tablature and play-along tracks for the tunes that I teach. So uh, if you're looking to learn some new tunes, check out MandoLessons.com and see what you can find. Uh, so let's jump into the sort of the place that triplets will often show up. I'm going to use the same, for jigs, I'm going to use the same example that I did in the uh, triplet lesson on sort of crafting the sound of your triplet and it's the tune jig of slurs which i teach on the website it's a great irish tune i'll just use the a part um and it's a great tune to work on triplets because you can really kind of throw them in everywhere it's got this kind of repeated sound uh the tune sounds like this without any triplets uh And with triplets, sounds like this. Now, you might not play triplets everywhere that I just played them, um, but if you're looking to really practice your triplets, and it does take some time to, you know, get your triplets to come out nice and even sounding and percussive, um, make sure you're kind of nailing all three of those notes or mutes. Um, then I recommend really just kind of playing a lot of triplets. Um, you know, you might play more than you normally would if you were kind of thinking about other aspects of your technique. Um, but if you really, if you want to work on triplets, just try to throw them in everywhere that you can, whether it's in jigs or reels. And that kind of trial and error. Some place, sometimes you'll try to throw in a triplet and it'll feel really awkward in your right hand or it will sound wrong. And that's probably... Um, a good, uh, a good way to kind of figure out whether a triplet should go there or not. If it feels really awkward or doesn't sound right, it may not be a natural place for a triplet to fall. Um, it also may just be that you need to work on your right hand kind of triplet technique a little bit because it really just kind of becomes a motion. So in this tune... We have this little repeating section that sounds like this. Oh, sorry. So it's 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 uh, bouncing back and forth. It's two five five oh five five two five five, oh. and that's the the twos and O's are the sort of the if we're thinking of jigs as one two three four five six or one two three one two three or jiggity jiggity it's the the twos and opens that we're playing are the kind of the downbeats or the j in jig or the one two three four five six being the one and four in a six eight measure um and then the fifth frets are the second and third notes and fifth and sixth notes or the the eddy so we have jiggity jiggity and the pick direction and triplets uh working on jigs you're going to be working with a down up down down up down pattern if you're unfamiliar with that there's a lesson over at mandolessons.com that can get you practicing that really important pattern for playing jigs um but oftentimes in jigs you're going to be putting triplets on that second and third beat or fifth and sixth beat kind of not not the downbeat it's not going to be 
triple it, dumb, triple it, dumb. It's going to be dumb, triple it, dumb, triple it. Um, so we have eighth triplet, eighth triplet, and that triplet is taking up the space of two eighth notes. So you're kind of taking the space of two eighth notes and cramming in a third note, and it sounds like this. And it works out really nicely in jigs with your pick direction. Um, and it becomes down, up, 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 down, up. Sorry, I'm not doing the right melody anymore, but down, up, 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 down, up. So let's try that a little bit. I'll slow it way down. Down on the second fret. And then on the fifth fret, it's going to be up, down, up. And then open A string down and then up down up in the fifth fret again second fret down up down up on the five open up down up on five a little faster sounds like this And really, you're looking to get your right hand to make that triplet just a nice little motion. And work on, you know, you can work with a little bit of articulation. Are you hitting one of those notes harder than the other? There's a lot of experimentation um, involved. And play around with some muting and playing full notes, which I explain in the other video on triplets. Um, so in, in jigs, it really works out nicely. You can just kind of roll through tunes, um, try throw in as many uh, triplets as you can. Triplets become a very kind of personalized thing. People will put them in different places. Um, they will use different pick directions. Um, and I think really lis listen to maybe some tenor banjo players tenor banjo players play a lot of triplets a lot of the, most most tenor banjo players play a lot of triplets or fiddle players like um tommy peoples does some great kind of really crunchy triplets and may, you know maybe try to imitate a tenor banjo player or a fiddle player tommy peoples being a fiddle player um and you know see see if you can kind of create that sound by using mutes or um kind of tone based triplets and then, so like I said, people will use different pick directions, put triplets in different places. It all becomes it becomes a very personalized thing. A lot of my friends put triplets in places that I don't, and I put triplets places that they don't. So there's no right or wrong a lot of the times. You can try to, again, the best thing to do is maybe try to imitate what some other folks are doing. When you get to reels, things get a little bit more complicated. Um, and that is because... When you do a triplet in a reel, and a reel is based on down, up, down, up, your pick comes out um, going the wrong direction. So um, I'll use a little bit, the kind of the first phrase of this tune. Uh, the tune is Feral O'Gara's. I'm not sure if I have a lesson for it on my website. If I don't, I should. Because um, it's a great tune. And I'll look into doing that. Um, but anyway, I'll teach you the first little phrase of the tune. Without the triplet, it, sounds, it starts on the second fret of the G string. And then three on the open D string. So that's kind of, well, let's see. Let's go a little farther. And then a little D arpeggio. So this, the second phrase is two open First phrase, second phrase, so in broader context of the tune it sounds like this. Etc. Um, but looking at that little phrase, we're going to add a triplet in there. So we have three 
strokes on the D string. I'm going to tune a little bit here. There we go. Eh, not quite. So we have three notes um, in a row on the D string. And we're going to take the second two, uh, sorry, the the second and third of those three notes and turn it into a triplet. So it's going to become down, and this is where people start to differ. What I do is I would play down, up, down, up, down. And then our next note is the second fret on the G string again. And so we've just gone down, up, down, up, down. Our natural inclination is to go up on that second fret, but then your pick is going to end up in the wrong direction for the rest of the tune or until you hit another triplet. Um, so I'll, I'll try to play that and you'll sort of, you'll hear it and you'll, you might even just see me like kind of flail around and look awkward. Oh, I, I switched back already. Uh, It just becomes all your down kind of heavy strokes end up on the up. Your pick just gets totally turned around. You probably have felt that before. Um, you know, if you're ever like, wow, my right hand feels really awkward, it's probably because your pick is going in the opposite direction. You know, it happens all the time. It happens to me. It happens to people a lot that have been playing a lot longer than me. Ultimately, as mandolinists, we just get used to kind of making do and flopping it back around and being like, okay, I'm off, time to get back on the right pick direction. So what what I would do in that situation is we're going down, up, down, up, down, and then I'm going to double down and use another down stroke on the second fret of the G string again. And I'm back on track. So I had to use two down strokes in a row. Down, up, down, up, down, down. But then I'm back in order. What other people will do is they will um, know that the triplet is coming and they'll double up a pick direction before the triplet happens. So rather than going down, up, down, up, down, they might go down, down, up, down, up. So let's try that and you can sort of choose for yourself which one feels more comfortable to you. So we're going to go down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And because our triplet is now up, down, up, it leaves a nice natural downstroke on the second fret of our G string to continue the phrase. Uh, versus. Again, one way or another, your pick's going to get out of sync. It's just a uh, it's a problem of whether you want to anticipate that and have your come out of your triplet with a natural neck stroke, or whether you want to double down after your triplet. You have to double down one side or the other, um, and it's just totally personal preference. So try both um, and see what feels best to you. I guess is a, um, you know everybody does it a little different. There's totally no right or wrong answer um and then you know just try throwing in triplets into tunes etc. And you know you'll start to you'll start to get a sense it may be a little fuzzy what I'm talking about with pick direction here, but just you know get that triplet movement into your hand and you'll start to realize how your pick direction is gonna start um, kind of coming out in unexpected places and it's a, a matter of smoothly transitioning back into a natural pick direction. So I hope this helps. Again, uh, mandolessons.com for a bunch more lessons. Um, and again if you want to work on getting your triplets from sounding like this. To this. And get a little more percussiveness in it. Check out the other lesson on triplets at Mando Lessons. Um, and that talks about kind of 
creating a good triplet sound. So thanks again. I uh, hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.